हेलो 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 हाई गाइज गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू न्यू वीडियो की हाल चल आई आपका वेरी गुड इन दिस वी गोन सी प्रॉब्लम मेक लेक्सोग्राफिकली स्मॉलेस्ट एरे बाय स्वैपिंग एलिमेंट्स यू आर गिवन अ जीरो इंडेक्स इंटीजर एरे ऑफ पॉजिटिव एलिमेंट्स एंड विच एज नंबर्स एज यू कैन सी यू आर गिवन दिस नंबर एंड यू आर ऑल्सो गिवन अ लिमिट नाउ इन वन ऑपरेशन यू कैन चूज एनी टू इंडेक्सेस आई एंड जे एंड स्वैप देयर वैल्यूज बट यू कैन स्वैप ओनली एंड ओनली वेन देयर एब्सोल्यूट डिफरेंस इज लेस देन इक्वल टू लिमिट सो at every at any point of time i can choose any two indexes i and j and i can swap them and why i would want to swap them obviously to achieve my goal what is the goal we will see but the condition here is that the value 1 and 9 their absolute difference should be less than equal to this limit which is 2 but obviously in this case it is 8 which is not less than 2 so i might not be able to swap it but if i see 1 and 3 obviously Three minus one, it is less than equal to two. That is the reason I will be able to swap it. Okay, great. I have to return the lexicographically smallest array that can be obtained by performing the operations any number of times. What do you mean by lexicographically smallest array? Obviously, lexicographically smallest array is the smaller the element should be able to come on the left. Which means that for this specific array, for this specific array, the lexicographically smallest would be one, three, five, eight, nine. Just a simply a sorted. Would be lexicographically smallest again. This is the best case scenario. I am saying that sorted will be lexicographically smallest. Why? Because smaller the element coming on the left side will make the array lexicographically smaller. For this case, in best case scenario, if we simply sort it, that will give us that you know one one two six seven. Uh, six seven and eighteen. This in best case scenario will be lexicographically smallest array. Obviously. it might not be possible to achieve this as you can see this is not the correct one for this specific answer but i'm saying this is the best case scenario in if if i would have allowed any operation whatsoever for swaps and this condition would not have been there then the best case scenario let's say of this most array would have been this but obviously we have a condition let's see the condition the condition is only and only swap the elements which are obviously having a difference of less than equal to limit so let's see how we'll do it so now i know that i i know my target my target is that i have to bring as a small as small element to its left this is my target why this is my target because i know this is my target or you can say maksad this is your target because you know that you have to get lexicographically smaller so this is your target for that you know that you will try to do something what is that something that something is swap values so now i will see that for all values i can swap for this one i know the limit is less than equal to 2 so i can swap this one with any values right any values it either can be 0 or a minus 1 or a 2 or a 3 right obviously numbers can not be negative or zero but the essence is that i can swap with any values whose difference less than equal to 2 right so again i will go on the left and the right and i will find all the values which are you know less than 3 and greater than minus 1 obviously negative count are not there so let's take this so i will just say okay i can swap this one with this 3 will i swap it obviously not because one is already small it is on the left side but again i am just trying to see that what all i can swap it against okay let's let's proceed forward um and again one cannot be swapped with 9 or 8 so i just was able to make one specific connection okay next is let's say 5 in this case 5 can i swap with 1 no i cannot can i swap with 3 yes i can oh yes i can okay make a connection can i swap with 9 no i cannot can i swap with 8 no i cannot okay no worries continue forward for 3 for 3 obviously i can make a connection or i can do a swap with 5 yes but i have already built a connection so yeah don't worry about it so you can also say that whenever you are at a point like you know at a node 3 let's say in this case you will only look for building connections on the right side because imagine left is already built the person on the left would have already built your connection so although the question simply says that you can try for entire array to build a connection but obviously i realize that left is already built so i don't have to build it again no worries so i can just try for building uh, on the right side i cannot build no worries move forward then um 
I'll try for nine. Obviously, nine can build uh, or do a swap with eight. Thus, this is the connection. Eight is last element. Now, did you see some pattern here? Obviously, you will see that one, five, and three. I can swap five with one, three with one here. Okay. And I also have this nine and eight. I can swap them. So, if I, and again, the problem says any number of swaps, any number of swaps I can do. So, ultimately, my target was to achieve something like, you know, sort it. So, if I can swap this, if I can swap this 5 with this 3, then obviously I can bring 3 here and 5 here. And then 1 will remain as is. So, I achieved this. Now, my question is, okay, just hold on. And if I would have asked you, if these array elements would have been 5, 1, 3, still the connection would have been something of this sort, right? Then also I would have been able to achieve what? 1, 3, 5. How? Simple. Just simply swap 3 and 5. Then 1 would be here. Then you know that 1 and 3 I still have a connection. So I can swap 1 and 3. So isn't it that this is one specific group of elements. Now in that group whatever elements are here I can simply swap them. And I can achieve 1, 3, 5. And same with this is one group. I can achieve 8, 9. So what we realized is ultimately our prime aim or maksat here is that firstly build the connection, build the connection. I will build the connection 1, 3, 3, 5. Then when the connection is built, I will get all the nodes in that specific connection, simply sort them and put them at their respective place. What I mean by that? Obviously, I will tell that with the help of the next example, but this is the essence. Let's see what is the time complexity for the approach which we have seen so far. So, we realized that firstly we have to build the connection. To build the connection, we ultimately realized that for node 1, I have to go and check for every node on the right side to build the connection. So, for one node, checking all the nodes on the right side, operation n. For n nodes, it will be n square. So, n square is just to build the connection. Then, after the connection build, I know that this belongs to one group, this belongs to next group. Now, I will sort all the elements so that I know, okay, this is the required case. Okay, sorting will again take n log n time. Because again, I have in total n elements. So, it is x log n, it is y log y, sorry, it is x log x, it is y log y. So, Ultimately, in the worst case, it will be n log in a sorting. And after sorting, I just have to assign these values to their respective indexes. What do I mean by respective indexes? I mean that obviously 1, 3, 5 should come at index 0, 1, 2. It should not come at index 0, 1, 3. No. Again, just to get this idea out of your head that what I mean by respective indexes, I will take one more example, which is the second example. But before that, the quick question. Will this work? Obviously not. Why? Because n is 1e5. If n is 1e5, n square would not work. How can we improvise it is a question. Can we improvise it? Uh, if you see that the primary bottleneck here is that for one, to build a connection with any another node, I, what I am doing? What I am trying to do here is, I am trying to go and search on the entire right side of it which is actually a big issue, which is actually a big issue. Now, to get rid of this issue, can I do something? Ultimately, for me, I just need to make a grouping of elements what all can become in one group. So, rather, I realized one thing. For one, I will ultimately go and search for the elements with a difference less than equal to limit, which means I will go and search for two and three both. Same way for 3, I will go and search for 4 and 5 both. So, what if the things would have been sorted? Again, just what if the things would have been sorted? Which means 1, 3, 5, 8, 9. Again, I have just sorted the things. If I have sorted the things out, then with 3, I will check just the previous element. Is it less than equal to limit? If yes, I can build a connection between them. Okay, for 5. Is the previous element less than equal to limit? Yes, I can build a connection between them. For 8, is the, is the previous element less than equal to limit? No, I cannot build a connection between them. Okay, can I build a connection here? Yes, I can. 
So you see that rather than going and checking for all the nodes on the right side, I'm just checking one extra node on the back. Thus, to make groups, now I will take O of n time only. O of n time only. But now the question from your end would be, Aryan, if that is the case, then how will you make sure that you are placing the correct element at its correct location? Which means, let's see, if as I would have asked you for this specific question, what could have been the best case possible scenario if there would have been no limit or no swap condition for the limit thingy, then obviously best case scenario would be the entire array sorted, right? 6, 7, 18. But obviously you will see that this is not the answer. If I just show you, this is not the answer. Why? Because you will see why in just a sec. Let's start off. Okay, firstly, we realize that what we will do, we will simply have to make pairs. To make pairs, earlier what I was doing, I was going on to one and was trying to search for the elements whose difference is less than equal to limit. So technically, I will search for two, three or four. And I will try to build this again, one also, one, two, three or four. And again, when I say uh, less than also, I will search it. So I will also be searching for uh, zero minus one and so on and so forth, which, which will give a difference of less than equal to limit. And I will search for those elements and I will build the connection. But now I realized I just have to build the group for group. Just one connection is enough. Just if I just show you one connection is enough. Like even if there would have been four here in the between, still only one connection would have been enough. I don't have to make a connection with three also. That's unnecessary because this is one group now. Just I need a group now, not the entire edges connections, all of that. So I realized, okay, first and first thing, make sort, like just do a sorting of this so that you are easily able to build the connections. Okay, when I sort this, I realized that uh, the one, I can build a connection here because the difference is less than equal to three. Here also I can build a connection less than equal to three. Six minus three is three. Okay, I cannot build a connection here, no worries. For a seven and six, I can build a connection, yes. 18, I cannot. So these are the three groups which I can form. What it means is, obviously I will sort this first group. I will get one, one, two, sort this group, get six and seven, sort this group, get a 18. Now you might ask, I why? Obviously, my task, my ultimate maxus was to place as a small element at its respective location. And if I tell you what this respective location mean now is that at this location 1, 1, 2. Now, rather than 1 to 1, I will place 1, 1, 2. That is the reason I need their respective indexes also before doing a sort. So I would have stored that for this index, sorry, for this element one index is zero. For this element one indexes, indexes five. For this element two indexes four. Same way for this uh, element six indexes two. For this element seven indexes one. For this element 18 indexes three. So when I sorted, I sorted the values, but I also know the corresponding indexes, which is zero, five and four. So I know the indexes are zero, five and four. These are the indexes. I know the values. Values are 1, 1 and 2. Obviously, try to place a smaller value at a smaller index. So what I will do? Simple. I will try to sort this. I will get 1, 1, 2. I will try to sort this. I will get 0, 4, 5. Why sorting this? Sorting this because I want to iterate on the smaller index first and try to place a smaller value on that index. So I'll simply place 1 onto 0, 1 onto 4, 2 onto 5. Simply a two-pointer traversal I can do. So what will happen? I will be able to place a 1, 1 and 2. On next iteration, I know the index is 1 and 2, elements are 6 and 7. So at index 1, again, I will sort the indexes. I will get 1, 2. I will sort the values. I will get 6, 7. I will place in value 6 at index 1. I will place value 6 at index 1. I will place value 7 at index 2. At index 2. And ultimately 18, again index is only 3, value is only 18. Just simply put it 18, 18. And that is it. This is your final lexicographically smallest. And that is the reason how you were able, how you were able to achieve your answer. Cool. Let's see the code. It's exactly the same as what we discussed down below. So firstly, I told you that uh, let's let's take the example also parallelly just so as to explain you that whatever what whatever we did is exactly same as the code also cool now 
simply uh, firstly we will sort the input array but as i mentioned before sorting make sure that you have that number to index connection so i will firstly build this connection this connection i will build it now i will sort this on the basis of values which means i will get 1 1 2 6 7 and 18 with their corresponding indexes as you can see 0 5 4 2 1 and 3 this is how i have simply sorted with the corresponding connection pairs as you can see this is a corresponding simple pair which i have and i have simply sorted it now it is sorted on the basis of values values then i will go on and try to build the groups how i will build the groups obviously um i will try to build the groups and in the group i will simply store the corresponding indexes in the group also in in the group you can store the values also but again it's a simple group vector of vector so what i will do how to make a group simply i will simply iterate on its corresponding values so you can see index i dot first index i minus one dot first which is the value value stored at the first num so i it's where the first so i'll just simply subtract the values is it less than equal to limit if yes as you can see if yes then put it in the group how in the very beginning the group will be made having just the first group will have the first index zero if the difference if the difference is less than equal to limit i will put the next index also in the same group difference less than equal to limit put the next index in the same group if not then make a new group make a new group and put that current index too okay then again check back yeah the like yes the difference is less than equal to limit okay put the index in the group same way uh here it is not okay put it in a new group three so this is how your groups vector of vector vector of vector will be made now what you will do you will go and individually traverse on each group you will go and traverse on each group and when i say each group obviously you will traverse on the first group let's say this group this group itself is the first group obviously i would need to sort the values make sure these are the indexes these are the indexes so i'll grab their values first and again that's the reason i told you that it is based on your um you know how you want to write it uh based on how you want to write it you can simply put the values also here but again um i just took the indexes only and again you can make an index value pair in a group also so it's, it's, it's totally up to you then what i will do i'll grab out the values at index 0 5 and 4 which are the values 1 1 and 2 so i have grabbed the values and sorted values i'll simply sort it then i will simply sort it and get 1 1 and 2 then i'll get the values which is 7 and 6 i sort it get 6 and 7 i'll get the values which is 18 sort it get 18 so now i have get, got the sorted values in one group i've got the sorted values i have to also sort the indexes 0 4 and 5 and simply place add the sorted index place the value 1 so sorting the indexes now for each individual index put the sorted value at that location override it and simply return the nums now because you are sorting and ultimately in the worst case you can sort the entire array thus the time will be o of n log n again make sure you're sorting each group and each group again in worst case let's say it is x log x it is y log y it is z log z in total in worst case it will be n log n upper cap and space obviously you are putting up elements in this group and again group will in total have n elements entirely thus the space will be o of n and again uh, you can have you know indexed array then you are having the corresponding group but again everything will be o of n itself this is your time and space complexity cool i hope you guys got it if yes please smash the like button and again the article you can find it on cool.com bye bye take care